Um, so the meeting is now being recorded, and we want to say welcome. So let me know if you can hear me. Just let me know if you can hear me. Yes, yes we can yes, hear you. Yes, we hear you. We can All hear right, you. Thank, you. thank you, and and welcome once more. Yes, thank we you. hear you. All right. Okay, so this is day one, and we have um, two more days to go. That is tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So let us know where you're joining us from, maybe your country or whatever region or your hometown or wherever you are joining us from. Just let us know quickly while we are starting up. My name is Shadra Limo. No, no, just send a message in the chat box. Uh, use the chat box and let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, we see your message as it comes in. Someone is joining from Nigeria, from Wuhan. Thank you so much for joining. So the video for each day will be posted on TIT YouTube China and also on the website and as well as the TIT Facebook page. So if you check the if you check the flyer, you will see all of the information on how to access the fish, also how to get hold of the website and all of that. They are all on the flyer. Probably later on, after each day, we'll also share the link in the WeChat group and also in the WhatsApp group for those of you that that want to. I want to watch the playback of the video for, for each day. So there will be share here. This is the, the TIT website, I mean the YouTube channel. So all of the videos for the previous days, they are all here for other editions as well. So all of the videos are here for all of the trainings we have had, including all the videos that we also release. Um, so the YouTube channel, you can check it out. Also on the website, if you come to the website and you come to training, uh, you will see the place we told you guys to come and download our, so you can find all of the things here as well. If you check the flyer also, you will see how to get a Facebook page, the website and everything. If you scroll at the bottom, you will see previous video as well. So this is going to be the, the certificate you're going to receive at the end of the training. And this certificate will only be given to people who complete um, the three days. So if you miss any of these days, then your eligibility for getting a certificate will be questioned. So you have to attend all of the days. It's just one hour each day, and we are out of here. So everything is, is done. If you go way below, you will see the videos also, the link of the videos. But we'll try to also put the current videos um, probably right beneath this one, which for the current videos there. And uh, for the certificate verification, we have rolled out two different methods of the verification process. For those that attended the OWCC 2024, 2023 OSCC, and uh, OWCC 2023, so you just have to come here and tap in your certificate ID. It's going to tell you your name, the program you attended, the date and time, uh, you receive a certificate and everything going to be brought up if you use the certificate verification. So as of this week, we launched a certificate download. So for the certificate download, since you already have received your certificate, you can just come here and put your certificate number and then you'll be able to download the PDF version of your certificate. Also, for those of you that will be getting certificate, after this training, you can also come here and just put your last name because you don't know your certificate ID uh, as of now. So you just come here and put in your last name. And then the system is going to tell you if you have a certificate or not, or even if your name is in the system or not. So for some of you that um, didn't send your name, please try to use your real name. There is an option for you to change your name. And if you don't know how to change your name, please 
uh, check the the chat box. You will see TIT support, and the person will be there to help you to change your name. But you already have the option to rename yourself. So just go to that option and rename yourself to the full name you want to see on your certificate. Like for example, there is somebody here called Cedric. So Cedric, I'm not sure if that's your, your full name. So you have to rename yourself and we're gonna use that name to put on your certificate. So at the end of the day, the three days, maybe on the 22nd or 23rd, you just come to the website and then you put your last name here and then you click on search. It will tell you if you are eligible to get a certificate or not, you'll be notified. If you also want a certificate to be sent to your email, we can send it out to your email. If you want to send to your WhatsApp or to WeChat, we can also send a certificate to any of the other platforms. So, but an easier way is for you to just come here and you go. To the process. I think we have a. Uh, entering our name, I think by mistake I omitted the button. So how do I enter with my room now on this page listening to you? Uh, you go to where you can see participant. If you check um, uh -huh. yeah, a picture or whatever name is there for you. Maybe for you, I think it's administrator. So just go there and then beside your name, you will see there is a three dot or horizontal three dot. You click on it, you see an option there to rename. So go beside your name, you will see to call rename. And then you just rename yourself and that will be okay. Or if you still have the time, you can rejoin the meeting. And in the process of rejoining the meeting, when they're asking you to put in the meeting ID and password, there's also a place there for you to put your full name. No, that's I've another done option it. also. I've done it. Thank you so much. All right. All right. That's good. So let's get a business. And if you already have our install, please let us know in the chat box. Uh, I'm not hearing anything. Am I the only one facing this issue? Uh, guys, can you hear me? There is one Daniel P. Newman. Yeah, so wow, you know, I'm clear. I can hear you loud and clear. All right. That's good. I hear you. Can hear All right, you, that's man. good. Uh, Lion player, Lion player. So Gideon, let me make you. All right, so sharp, sharp. if you already have our install, please let us know if you already have our install because this is going to be practical. So we don't, most of the other trainings, probably we have had sessions for just maybe chatting and all of that. But this one is going to be practical. So please let us know. Our install. We have shared that message over and over. And also, please open your hour and our studio. Or you can just open only the hour studio. Uh, if you are not speaking, please mute yourself. We decided to give the option to everybody. Once you join, you are muted. So, so the fact that you are unmuted, that means yes, you are yourself on. So, yeah, it's okay. Um, it's okay. Just mute yourself. So we're already giving an option to everybody to download Arrow. And we hope that you already have it. Some of us join right now and our first time to join. Kind of share the link to download Arrow. Uh, we already go and visit the website. Check the flyer, the flyer you have seen, or you visit the network.org slash training. There you see download hour for Windows or for Mac OS. So once you click, it's just going to download the file directly. You don't have to maybe click too many places. So visit TIT website and download the hour the if you don't have it. But let's, let's move on for the sake of time. For those that have it, uh, if you're just joining us, the video will be placed on TIT website. So you can as well go there and rewatch. Oh. Please mute yourself, guys. Um, let me do that.
If you are not speaking, just mute yourself. You don't have to omit. All right, so this is our studio. This is our studio. We told you to download our and our studio. And the reason why is because you can also use our to do your normal thing, but it's almost like you are using, for some of you that have seen comment prompt. For some of you that have seen comment prompt like this, you can also use your computer by, by comment prompt, right? But the thing is, you cannot have a graphical interface. Maybe you wanna see your plots, you wanna see other things, you cannot have that option. So if you install R, it's just gonna give you a terminal where you can do your scripts and all of that. But R Studio is more of like an IDE for some of you that have been coding before, or it's a platform where you can be able to see your plots, you can interact with your files from your computer, and it just gave you a graphical look. And also for some of you that have used SPSS, uh, I think for those in the WeChat group, I'll share some screenshots today on the pros and cons when it comes to SPSS and ARA. ARA is much more uh, better than SPSS, but in case you don't want to maybe get involved into, maybe even tap in two plus two, like it's gonna be maybe something according to you and you are not um, that much interested into anything concerning coding, then you can use SPSS. But using SPSS, you also have limitation when it comes to customization or advanced customization of your plots or of your data. And also SPSS is either probably you are getting a cracked version from someone or maybe your university is uh, giving you your university is giving you the an account for you to use the SPSS, or your organization is giving you that. Besides that, SPSS is not free. But as all of you can serve as witness, you are able to download Ara and Ara Studio for free. So Ara is is free of charge. SPSS is not. Ara you can do advanced customization. In SPSS, you cannot do advanced customization. And there are a whole lot of things out there that you cannot do with it. So with this environment, there are a couple of things that we have to know. There are a couple of things we, we have to know as well. Uh, we have like four basic windows, but now you can only see three. This one, this one, this one. Where you can see environment, history, connection, that's one of it. Where you can see console, terminal, Michael's background job is another one. And then where you can see file, plot, packages, and all of that is another one. There's another place where you can also use to write your codes. If you are using just the R, you're going to have- you your screen? You cannot see anything. I don't know. Yeah, you're sharing your screen. We are seeing it. Uh, and your mouse cursor, everything blinking. All right. Thank you for the feedback, Gideon. So, bro, you can check your, check your from your end. So if you are just using R, you will just have a terminal look like this. But then one of the advantages of using the R Studio, you have another option where you can be able to write the same thing, but it's not going to be executed. So if you start to tap in here, whatever you tap will be executed once you press enter or when it moves to the next line, which is not recommended. So in here, you can also do your tapping. Another thing you can also do in here is to interact with your terminal. Hello, hello. Host. If you have been using, maybe... sorry to interrupt, please. Please, yeah. um, I'm asking, how can I view both your slide and my R Studio because it's a bit challenging to me here. You cannot view um, both probably at the same time. You will just see you have yours with you, and then on the maybe on the upper right corner, you will see a little thing about mine. Um, and then you can take it up from there. Yeah, I just wanted to view both, just like in Word, so I can use both at the same time. Is it not possible here? Yeah, you can reduce the sizes. Reduce just the reduce the size. In the upper right corner, you can also have a little screen there that will also show me why you also have the bigger screen sharing yourself. Oh, all right, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the same thing, if you have used Windows before or even your Mac computer with Terminal, 
You also have the same thing here to enter out of your files and folders and everything. You can also do the same thing to do all that of stuff here. But mostly you're not going to deal with this. Uh, you're just going to focus on the console. On this side, where we have the environment history and all of that, everything you have been tapping or doing will be saving into history. And then the environment is where you can see all of your data frame, your variables you're going to be creating, your data you're going to be importing. You can see all of that as well from the environment era. So shortly we're going to see that. And then if your environment is getting a lot of um, data or things are being here, you can come here to clear all of, all of it. So once you click on this, something like a brush or broom, it's going to clear all of what you have on your environment. From here as well, you can also open and save your, you can open and save different environments. And then also one of the advantageous part about this one, you can also upload your data set. So maybe you have your data from SPSS, you have your data in Excel, or you have it in CSV or SAS or SATA, you can as well get the data from here. You can also use command to also import your data, but as well, you can also use the graphical user interface to import your data. If you click on here from Excel, it's going to bring up a dialog box where it's asking you to choose or browse on your computer to find the place you have that Excel file saved. So we'll get that shortly when we get to um, data import and export. We'll show you how to do it. But you also have the ability to do it from that option as well. And then coming to this part quickly, you, you have different options like file, plots, packages, help, viewer, and presentation. Files can be used for you to also interact with your, with your drives. Your drive C, your my document, picture, desktop. You can also interact with your drive or your local computer from all of these, uh, from the file area. You can also set up the directory and all of that from here. So I'm just giving you an overview of it because when we start to use it so that you can know probably where, where we are and where to get certain things. Plots, if you maybe on the third day or starting tomorrow, when we start to generate um, plots or visualization, you will get to see most of your plots here. And also on a viewer, also you will see some of your plots. For those of those plots that have to do with uh, animation and all of that, you're going to see it from, from viewer as well. Help, you can use it to, to find or to search for any other thing, like package, or probably you don't understand certain commands or you don't understand uh, certain keyword. You can also search, and then it's going to give you a full documentation about that thing. We'll also show that very shortly. Packages. You also have two ways to install the packages. You can use the command line to install your packages, or you can use this area for packages. So once you click here and you come on install, you can now tap the name of that package you want to install. And then after that, you click on, uh, you. I advise that you also take this option for install dependency. So every other little files or attributes, they can also come along with that package. And then once you click on install, that package is gonna be installed. Also, you can also do it from the command line, which you're gonna see later on how to install the package as well from there. You can as well attach or detach a package. Maybe you wanna use certain package, you can attach or detach that package by just clicking on it or you unclick. And you can also see a little description about that package, what it is used for. So basically that's just an overview of the, the interface for our studio. There are other options, similar things you can do from, from these guys over here like files. And if you have used Microsoft Word, I think you'll be familiar with files and you can also see what files does. As always, for most of the programs, files are going to open new files, new projects, save, save as. These are basic things that are on the files. So once you have been using Microsoft Word or using your computer, this shouldn't be maybe much strange to you. 
Um, the same thing for edit. So you can just go around and play around here and see probably what it does. But the main thing is what I'm just going to talk to you about. So, so far, if you have any question concerning what we just talked about, then you can unmute yourself and ask a question, or you can uh, send a message in the chat box. Maybe there was something that I talked about and I was so fast, uh, you didn't get clearly. I said I have a question, are you getting me? Okay, good evening. Yeah. So just use the option for raising hand. If you know the option for raising hand, just raise your hand, then we can we can recognize you uh, quickly. But just go ahead. Whoever wants right, to speak now, you. you can go. Thank you. Uh, like before you go forward, there are other uh, studios and library that you use, like uh, we have the non pay we have the pandas and all that. So please. Can you tell me the advantage of using the Arrow Studios as compared to those other studios for the data analysis? Uh, NumPy or Scapa, these ones you can use them also when you are using basically like pattern for data analysis or data science. But then using those other uh, uh, packages, you have to get um a fundamental programming skills. So the first thing is even using this R, you also need to have a little bit of programming skill, but it's not in depth as compared to what you need to have for pattern. So if you want to use non pattern and all of that, then your most focus can be on using pattern for data science. For R, you can also use different packages as well to do the same analysis. So later on during the training, you're going to see Based on what you want to do, there are packages for certain things you want to do. And what we're going to do during the training is that almost all of the packages or data sets we're going to be using are data sets that are available to every one of you. As long as you have R and R Studio installed, every other package or data set we're going to be using, you also have that data set to your disposal. So we are going to do the same thing at the same time without probably anyone leaving behind, or I have to send maybe certain files to you, or I have to send certain photos to you now. You also have access to it as long as you have R. That's one of the advantages of using uh, R, especially for uh, your analysis and all of that. Uh, when it comes to pattern, you don't have that option. So that's that's one of the difference or differences. Uh, Moses, you can go ahead quickly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have one challenge. I installed the R some time back, and uh, there is certain work which I already have. So I would like you to to explain to me how I can create a, a new environment in the R console so that I can start a new work without uh, as I con as I, I I left the other old worker still in the R console. You. Install new R. Let me let me repeat the question. Okay. I already have the R mm -hmm. studio in my computer. Everything is working, okay. but I'm getting a challenge. I'm having a challenge of creating a new environment in R console. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So for the console, it's just one. You cannot create additional console, but for your environment, all of your data you have been saving before or if it's one doing later on you're going to see all of the variables and data set we're going to be importing they will be here on our environment they will be on the environment so from here you can save that environment so even if you open new um our studio or you take your work to someone else's computer you can also reopen your environment and start from there your things will also come from the console as well but if you have not saved the work or save your environment, then that's one is going to be a problem. So I'm not sure if you save it, but if you save it, you can also just come here. Right on the environment, you can see a folder leg. If you click on that, it's going to ask you to find the place you save that environment. And then once you load the environment, you can start to, to use it from there. But if you want to clear, you can also clear your environment, but I don't think that was the case. Your case was how you can use your same data. 
So I don't know if you save it, but if you're not saving, then uh, that's the problem. But if you save it, just come here to this folder sound, and then you can upload everything. You can also use it back to your console. So let's take one more question and then we move on. Hello. Uh, yeah. yeah, hello. Um, I'm quite, I'm totally new to this R and R studio, but uh, I'm trying to maybe uh, relate in terms of other software like Stata, uh, SPSS. So I wanted maybe to know the relationship between R and R studio, why are the two going together? And then this console window, if I may use the, my understanding from Stata, should we understand this window as the command window? Instead of talk of command window, is console yes. the command window? Yes, you can understand console as the command window. Ah, okay. And, 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 R, and R, R, R Studio, yeah. how are they related? All right. So you see, yeah, R, okay. R Studio is like the house. So in order for you to have, um, then R is the engine. Or let's say R is just, um, R Studio is like the frame of a car. And then R is like the okay. engine. Yeah. So if you observe right. right beneath the console, you will see R 4.4.1, right beneath this console. Yeah. You see R 4.4.1. So if you can also use different versions of R by R Studio, maybe if R have released a newer version and you download that version, you can also use that version here. The next time you restart R, I was going to ask you to choose uh, which one of the versions of, I mean, our series is going to ask you which one of the versions of R you want to use. So your version, the, the reason why you install R first before installing R Studio is because we need the R. R is the language. R is the engine. But we just need this frame for R Studio so that we can have a beautiful look about how we can save our data, open our data, view our plots, we cannot do all of these things uh, in a very beautiful environment just by using R. So that's the relationship. Okay, thank you. So one there serving as the engine, one there serving as a frame. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right. So the script editor is what we're going to get to shortly. Um, you have three different areas. So another area that I talk about. Is where you can type your code. If you don't want to use the console, which is going to execute your, your code line by line, you can use something for uh, the script area. So to use that, you click here on this plus, and then you see our script. Or another way you can do it is to say um, new blank file. From your file area here, you see new blank file, and then you click on our script. Or you just come here and then you click on our script. Another way you can do it is to press the control key on your keyboard and you press one. So you press the control key on your keyboard and you press one, then it's going to bring up the our script area. In this our script area, you can now tap everything like you are tapping your notes and then you can save it later on. You can transfer it to another arrow and then you continue your work from there. So we're going to use this one a lot. We are not going to use the console often. We're going to use this one a lot to read all of our calls and, and many other programs that we have. So now let's move on. Um, the first thing we want to do is to show you how you can get help and other basic functions as well with R. I don't have the same R interface. Uh, so we get to that shortly if you don't have the same R interface. If you want to navigate away from any of these ones, like maybe currently it's in the R script area. So if you want to use the console or the environment or your file, you can also click to go there, or you can use the control key and press one for the script area, two for the console area, three for the environment area. So like that control one, control two, control three, and then you can navigate your way around different areas. So the first thing when we open our our script, we have a blank one. And also for the console area, probably when we have seen a lot of scripts have been run or a lot of comments have been executed, at any point in time, we can clear 
everything we have at our console by using the brush right in the upper corner here, or we can tap Control L. Stick your hand on the Control key and then you press L. It's going to clear everything you have on your console. It's going to clear everything you have on your console. So from here, we can also do the same basic arithmetic. Like maybe you want to do two plus two. Um, I was going to calculate that for you and give you four as your answer. You can tap it in a console. You can also tap it here, two plus two. Uh, let's... So if you do it like this, you can highlight everything and then you use the control key and enter. That's a shorter way and faster way or you can come to pull and then you run, uh, you run code selection or you can run selected line. But it's just easier for you to just highlight and then you press control and enter. It's also gonna calculate the same two plus two for you and give you four. You can use different, different mathematical expressions. Uh, so let's start with that for as our beginner level. Let's start with that first. So let's say we want to add five plus five plus six. So we run that, we get 11. And then in R, we have something called variables. For some of you that have been programming, you also understand variables in a, an assignment. A variable is almost like you have a house and then, or maybe you have a box. That box is a variable. You can give that box a name. Maybe you can call that box um, like Victoria, or you can call that box uh, Zanzibar. And then in that box, you want to save things in the box. So that's called the examine. We are assigning things to the box. For example, we did the first calculation, five plus six, and it gives us 11. Let's say in the future, we want to keep this number five, and we also want to keep this number six to keep using it over and over and again. But every time we want to use it, we don't want to say five, or we don't want to say six. We just want to call that variable. We just want to have the box. And once we have the box, when we look inside the box, we can see five. When we look inside the box, we can see um, six or whatever variable we have. So let's see how we can do it. Maybe we can say A. So a variable cannot start with a number or on a score. But you can use a letter. But in between, you can also put numbers. So start your variable with, it can be lowercase or uppercase. Please repeat on the addition. Yeah, we're going to get that shortly. The addition is just you tap in 5 plus 6 or whatever uh, number you want to add, subtract, or divide. So let's say now we want to assign this number five into variable A or into box A. Let's just say box A or box one or box one, box A, whatever it is. The name can be any name you want. It can be Louis. Um, it can be any name you want. So in R, we also use this greater than with a little half in. It's the same as you saying box A equal something else. So let's say box A equals five. You can also use equal, the equal sign on your keyboard, but in R you're going to see that uh, most often, this sorry, one is going please, to be used most often. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, please. Can you, uh, when you type A, I don't know how you got to box one. Please, can you just refresh a little? Huh? No, I just removed the A. I just, uh, the A is not in use again. So we can use any okay, name. So Okay, so how do you get the box one showing there? I just tap it. You can tap maybe uh, Okiki or Emmanuel. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can use any name you want to use. A name that you can okay. use to remember that in this name or in this box uh, is where I'm saving five or is where I'm saving okay. my entire data set. So we are saving five in box A, I mean box one. So if I use control, and enter, five have been saved into box one. So if you check my environment now, you see that I have a value here, box one, and the value here is five. Now I can also do the same and say maybe box, let's use Emmanuel. 
And now I want to assign. If you want to get this, this sign, you can put your hand on the alternate key, the key on your keyboard that has ALT, and then you press the, the minus. If you look at the top of the keyboard, you see the minus key or the half end key. So you stick your hand on it together and then you can generate this sound. Or you can manually tap it. You tap a less than, and then you put a minus. That's also another way to do it. But the faster way, just hold down the alternate key and press the minus, and you're gonna generate this sound. So in this one, I wanna save six. Six will be saved into a manual. So now what we can do is to see if we can add. So let's add um, box one and a manual. So I can create another variable and say, or maybe I can just say box one plus in manual. Uh, if you observe, I didn't, I didn't run in manual line. So now in manual is on our environment, meaning it has been saved. So anytime in the future we can use it. I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Clearly, just use the chat box. So box one plus Emmanuel. And then when I press enter, you can see also it gave me the value of 11. Also, you can do addition, subtraction, modification, division of this number. How did you run it? So if you come, if the crosser is blinking at this line, you can press the control key and enter, and then it will be run. Or you can highlight a particular line, and then you press the control key on your keyboard and enter. It will also be run. That's another way to run it. Or you can also you assign, highlight it. How did you assign uh, the, the variable in the environment? It will be automatically assigned. Once we run it, or once you press control enter, it will be automatically uh, brought up here. Okay. 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 Yeah, this one you are not uh you don't have anything to do with this one. So uh you just run it from here and then it'll be safe here. Even if you up if you import your data set, it will also be here as well. So you can also do division modification addition with it. But let's just uh go over it quickly. Someone said it was very fast. So box one can be any name. And then we can assign any value you want to assign to it. We can also assign a whole different maybe table or an entire Excel document we can assign to box one. Also a manual can be any name, it's just a variable. And we assign a value also to a manual. Now we can add a manual and box one. And also we can create another one maybe called sum and assign uh, both box one and a manual to, to it as well. So that's Let's another way you can also. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, for me, I was trying to go with the way you go, and then why mine is not showing in the environment? Uh, can you? That means probably you have not run it, so you have to highlight the line, and then uh -huh. put your hand on the control key, and then you press enter. After highlighting. Press, I like the entire expression, box one, yes. less than five. You get it? Okay. Sorry, sorry, I'm not getting it. He, he, he can also, he can also run. No, no need of selecting, no, no, no need of highlight. No, you cannot see it on environment. So first you have to, before you see box one or in manual, um, hmm. you have to to run it. So you can either come to code and run select a line. Yeah. Once you do it, it will also come here. Or you just, once the crosser is blinking behind this one, you can also press the control key and enter, it will also be run. But then navigate away, maybe yours is on history or maybe yours is on connection. So try to change and see if you can come back to environment. All right, let's Hello. move on. Hello. Can we have? Yeah. It's working. Hello. Yeah, working. 
Okay. Yeah, who's that? James? Yeah. Lucas. I think, yeah, those who asked how you can run, I think if you check at the top of the, the place where you type the code to run, you can see arrow there. There is a green arrow or for other arrow scripts, you can see run. Once you click on it, run. Yes. The line that has the cursor will automatically run. Yes, where you are. Once you click on that run, the line will automatically run and gets to your environment. Yeah, I think you already uh, is, is working for him. Yeah, Lucas, go go ahead quickly. Yeah, um, I was trying to ask, like the beginning of our scripts, like I was lost. Can you please go back? So to open our script, you come here to this plus, and then you say yeah. uh, our script. Then it's going to yeah. open up the scene. You click here, and you click on our script. It's going to open up a clear area like this. Right, and then you can just step in the same thing you are seeing here. So every time you tap it, uh, if you want to see the output, then you can run it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. You come at the end of the line, and then you just click yeah. on run. Like this that. one is so easy. You, you can run it like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Clear. Thank you. All right. So the next thing we want to move on now is to comment. So maybe, for example, you you want to specify or clarify. So someone that box one and Emmanuel are two variables that are holding, uh, they are holding numbers or they are holding certain things, right? So you can use something called a comment. And to use a comment, you can use the, the pound or other people refer to it as hatch or this number sound. It's on your keyboard, you can use the shift and three. I think you have used it a lot. So anything you tap here, will not be run as a code. It's just a comment to explain a particular line or to explain the entire code. So if you want someone to understand, uh, you can say box one is, uh, is holding or keeping the number five like that. So just to explain. So you can use comment to do that. All right, so that uh, should be very easy. Uh, let's move on quickly because of, of time. The video will be on the YouTube channel. Later on, we're going to share the link so you can go back and watch. Uh, we have more things to discuss today, but time is not our friend. So the next thing is data structure. For data structure, we have five different kinds of data structure, basically. We have vectors, we have matrices, we have lists, we have data frame, and we have factors. So to go quickly, let's start with uh, a vector. So when you talk about vector data structure, they are one dimensional array. And to show you that, let's create one, um, one numeric vector. It can be any name as well, right? So it doesn't matter because it's a numeric vector, but then the way in which you going to see it to be a numeric vector is by this expression. So C, and then in a parenthesis, you can put any numbers you want for this um, vector to hold or to keep. Uh, let's put up to five. So C means concatenate. OK, C means concatenate. Or you can just consider it in your own understanding, like to keep. Let it just keep from one to five. So if we run this, you can see here in our environment, numeric vector uh, is a uh, is a number kind of a data, as we call it numeric. It have a number from one to five, and these are the numbers one, two, three, four, five. We can also have something called a character vector, not just a numeric vector. We can also have a character vector. And the same expression for a character vector also we can we can keep characters in it. For example, we can say maybe ABC or whatever character we want to keep in it. So this is a character vector. So if we also run it, you can see a character vector here. The data type is CHR meaning character or chart, some other will refer to it as chart. So these are two different kinds of uh, vectors. And at any point in time, you can access 
specific elements within any of these vectors. Let's say, for example, we want to access the first element. We want to access the first element of uh, the numeric vector. For example, we can run this command and say the numeric vector. So our studio gave you the opportunity to complete your code or give you suggestions. So you can see our vector is our, our data. And then what we want to get is the is the first the first value in that entire data set. I mean in that entire uh, variable. So numeric vector can be a variable name. It's similar we have box one or Emmanuel. We can also say Emmanuel vector or Emmanuel whatever. It doesn't have to be vector also. It can be any name we want. So if we run this code, now first element has now come to our environment, we can we can print it. If you have been using pattern, print is also another command you can use to display um, results. So if you print this, we'll also see one. Or you can also output it. So once you use print first element, we should create as a variable, the value in it was one. So you can do the same thing for the character vector, we can also see different, I mean, each of the different values that are in that entire data set or that entire vector or that entire variable. The next thing we can look at is uh, metrics. We can create different metrics in R um, based on different dimensions. For example, we can create a two by three metrics in, in R and we can give it a name. Maybe we can say metrics one, and then in this matrix, we want to we want to save or want to put an expression. So metric one can be any name, but just a name that we can be able to use to remember that this is a matrix. Anytime we see this variable name or the car frame or this house that is called matrix one, we know that inside of that house or inside of that car, um, everything that is related to matrix. So it's another good way to name your variables with a name that you can remember. And now we're using a keyword, metrics. And inside this matrix, what we are saying is give us a number from one to six. And then the number of rows, uh, the number of rows we want to be in this matrix, maybe we want two. And the number of columns we want for this matrix, we want maybe three. So if I run this, I have a matrix here. So if we view this matrix, let's say for example, we print this matrix one. If we print matrix one, we can see the value down here is a two by three matrix. In our console here, we can see it, or we can use another expression called view. View matrix one. And then it's gonna give us a better view of this. So you can see here the metrics. It's a two by three metrics. Uh, V1, V2, V3, those are different column name. We can change it. But just to show you is a value from one to six. So if you want to have a matrix from whatever number to whatever number, then you can change the expression out of from one to six and use different expression that that you want. The next thing we want to view quickly uh, we have 10 minutes to go. The next thing you want to view quickly is a uh, list. So we are covering these things because tomorrow we'll start dealing with data, data manipulation, and if time permits, we'll start plotting and seeing some graphs and all of that. So these ones are just basic things to give us an understanding before we jump into the main thing. So it might be part of boring for some of you that already know it, or it might be too fast for some of you that haven't, but let's take it easy as we can. The video will be there. You can go back and watch the video and decrease the speed to follow suit. So lists, um, lists you can just have different variables. So all of the variables we have created before, we can save them in a list and then we can access that list. For example, we can create a list called maybe my list and then in this list, what we want to do is we want to 
use this key word called list, which is the main thing. And then in this list, we want to have maybe numeric vector. We created one variable called numeric vector. We created another one called um, character vector. And then we created another variable called first element. Or I just say maybe matrix one. Okay. So we have three variables save inside this my list. So it comes out as a data frame. We're gonna show you later what is data frame. So you see an environment here with a blue something. When I click on this blue one, I can be able to see uh, the entire list and all of the variables that are saved into it from the, the three different variables that we have. We can see the entire my list. And then from here, we can also access specific things in this list. For example, if we want to access the first element in, uh, in my list, we can probably say first element or maybe first item. And then we can use my list as our, as our case study and say we probably want to access the first element in, in this. If you remember the very first, uh, the very first thing that we we put in here was numeric vector. So, if we try to view or we try to print first element or first atom, we should be able to see all of the values in the very first variable that we use, which was basically the numeric vector and the numeric vector we have from one to five which is this guy so we can access element within the list we can access element within the list so i'm going to i'm going to do the last one on data frame and then we will stop here for today and take probably any question if you have if not then we can close it up for today so the last one is data frame data frame for most of the other ones we have been doing Data frame is a two-dimensional heterogeneous data structure. So we can consider it probably as an Excel or on an SQL table, right, for data frame. So to create a data frame, for example, we can say DF uh, for data frame, just to remember the name, but the name can be anything we want. So the key word here is gonna be data, data frame. And then in this data frame, we wanna have probably different data. For example, maybe ID, and then the ID of uh, this person or this group of people is one, two, three. And then we want to also have names. The name of these people, we can have uh, different names. Maybe we can say Alice, or maybe you can use Emmanuel. But let's use Alice. And then another name we can have here, maybe Bob. And then we can take one more name, maybe um, Charlie or something like that. And then we can have another variable called age. So in this age, it is gonna be numeric. So we can have maybe different ages like uh, 25, maybe 30. And then maybe um, we can put 35. So this is a data frame. So if we run this guy, what we just created now is a data frame. If we check our environment, we can see a DF as our data frame. If I click on it, now you can see it comes uh, as an Excel, like an Excel uh, uh, spreadsheet. So you can see the ID, the name, the age, and everything. We can as well pull out maybe or get only the first name, first ID, first you know, age, and all of that from this data frame. For example, we can we can get probably let's say let's create one variable called first row from this data frame. We want to get on to the first row from here, and then we say this first row equals to our data frame, and then just give us only the first row. So if we run this, uh, a first row variable has been saved. We can view it or we can print it. So if we print this first row, we can now see that we have the ID here, one, the name Alice, and the age 25. We can also view it. Um, 
you can also view it to have a better view. You can see the ID is one, the name is Alice, the age is 25. So that's data frame. As we progress, we will see later how we can use data frame for most of our data to view it. So I think I was very fast because of the time. So I'm gonna stop here for now. We have to respect the time. So if you have any question, five minutes left, you can ask your question. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you so much for, uh... Uh, you try to uh, read your, your your best to make use of the limited time to explain a lot of concepts, a lot of things. My only maybe uh, humble request would be, if if at all is possible, uh, can we use maybe comparative knowledge, knowledge from the known software? Some people know SPSS, others know Stata. Uh, mention them. I mean, can we use language from these other software, if at all is possible? to explain something about what we are doing now, because this is the unknown window to most of us. So for example, here we're talking about maybe creating variables. So I just maybe understood that one was the end. I didn't know what was happening here. It was after entering things we're going to into the environment window, but also under console there. So maybe do something like instead, this is what you may call maybe value labels or creating value, uh, variables or something like that. Is it possible? Maybe it may facilitate understanding. I don't know, it's just a humble request. Okay, we'll consider the request uh, going forward. Any other question? No, sorry, yeah. uh, the last one was, uh, I see that there were some questions coming in the chat box there. Other people having technical challenges maybe to join or this and that. I wonder if you've got a team, somebody to help you, for example, so that you concentrate on explaining whatever you have on your, uh, what go this, uh, what you've planned maybe to teach us or to train us on, so that somebody can be handling those technical issues uh, underground, so other than maybe diverting your attention. I wonder if there's somebody who can be assisting you in that regard. Thank you. All right, so we have a few people on the on the chat box doing that. So, yeah. Okay, well, we'll well, I have a question. question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, when, when we finish doing the numeric version, uh, mm -hmm. I I run it and it's in showed in the environment. But for the character, Hello. I, I Hello. did, but it, it did not. Hello. I don't know if Good the afternoon. C that comes the the C that comes after the less than and the minus sign. Mm -hmm. The C that comes after it. Did you pipe it manually or did it come by it on the phone? No, I type it manually and it's a small, small letter C. Small letter C, yeah. So I did the same and then I put the cursor at the end of the distance and then I run it. Nothing is showing on the environment. What, what could be the issue? So when I, it's showing on unexpected symbol in character. I don't know what that means. Yeah, so it will give, it will give more details. So what you can do if you're in other of the groups, either the WhatsApp or WeChat, after here you can uh, chat with me or send a message in that. Group and then did, we can solve the did, problem. Did you, also. Did, did you put your letters in uh in quotations? Yes, I put my letters in quotation and the, and also uh, put the the comma. I'm sure the error message have indicated that. So what you can do, just send a screenshot in the group, and then we're gonna yes. solve it together. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. Send the Hello. screenshot. Hello. Screenshots. Okay. Hello? Yeah. Just send a screenshot if you have any. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah, Abdul, just um, wait a minute. Uh, Abdul, just wait a yeah. minute. Jenny, go ahead. All right. Thank you very much uh, for the training. Um, hey, uh, okay. It's just a request that I have because, like, okay. uh, for some of us, like, uh, we are basic when it comes to coding. So I was thinking um, if it is possible, like, especially when it comes to giving the comments, because, uh, like, for example, what the other brother just said, that he's getting some errors. I think it is the input, inputting the comment that um, some of us might have problem with. So maybe, I don't know if you will have the time to just brush over it briefly on maybe just key concepts that we need to, uh, to gather when we are inputting, uh, when, when we are giving specific comments using the different variables and maybe different elements. All right, so officially we will yeah. end the meeting maybe in two minutes. And then if you have questions, we can stay and do it together, or you can send a screenshot in the group. We will also do it there. We have the entire day. If I will stay with you to do it, uh, yeah, I will be available to do that. So stay with me here please, after the. Please send time. the QR code for the groups for WeChat. Hello, yeah. Hello. Hello.
Yeah, yeah, bro, I want to ask a question. Okay, so what we're gonna do? We have a lot of people with questions. Uh, for the WeChat group, if you have, I don't know which group you saw the message from, but if anyone you saw sharing the message, just tell them to add you to the TIT group because the group I've already exceeded, I think almost four hundred persons now. So you cannot join by QR code. So someone have to invite you. So just, or you can add me on WeChat using this ID. Uh, I send my WeChat, B. they can add, add me, then I will add them to the group. All right. Or you can also add me using IT underscore guru underscore B, and then I'll add you to the group as well. Let's take one more question. Yeah, Abdul. I have another question. Hello. Another one. Let's take a new person. Yeah, Let's yeah, take I someone a, who I've not asked before. I have a question. I'm a new person, man. I, I, I have a question. I haven't asked a question. Um, you know, okay, the new I'm also hello. <laughs> hello, I'm also okay. Go ahead, go so, ahead. I want to uh, ask okay. what is the difference between between data frame and the matrix. Because I'm saying like data kind of frame, similar. you can be able to data frame is more of like it's a two dimensional array, and also in data frame, you can view your data like in Excel. But if you see like metrics, we cannot view it uh, like that, except we save it as a data frame. Mm -hmm. Metrics is more of like a one dimension as well, but data frame is a two dimensional array. But we explain that, I think the two dimension and one dimension might be confusing, but yeah. we explain that, yeah, very, very shortly. Just tell me, let's end this officially and then this, those are uh, questions. Uh, my to question what we is, did. let me just um, chip in. Yeah, go ahead quickly. Um, you know, I study robotics. I want to know, like, you know, I've never heard of, of RV Studios, really. Like, today's my first time in about, like, two minutes to hear what this is. And I tried to find what it, what it is, and it says an IDE. So is it just, like, um, um, code blocks, or it's, I don't know, is it a different thing altogether, or I really don't even know what it is used for. I, probably, I just... Ended up here because my one of my friends was like, yo, this is an engineering course. Maybe you can just jump into it. And I'm like, okay, let me just check what it is. The advanced number of things you can do with R and R Studio. You can do um machine learning and deep learning with R and R Studio. So it's not just limited to what we are doing or data analysis. You can do machine learning as well with with R and R Studio. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. So let's uh end it here for today. If you have any question, you can stay. Back, or you can send a screenshot in the groups and then we will resolve your question. Thank you for the introduction. We look forward to tomorrow. Okay. Um, so just a minute, just a minute. We want to do something quickly. For the sake of record, please, if you can, so that we can know what's that end of the meeting, just turn on your camera. Let's take a screenshot what? of those that are here. Yeah, just turn your camera. I want to take a screenshot quickly of those that are here, and then we will we will call it a day. All right, we are taking the first screen, so you don't know which screen you are on. So please just stay just stay with us. Um, shortly, we. Going to do it first. Yeah, don't worry. As long as probably we can oh, see okay. a fraction of your name or your face, because what will happen is later on, some people will say, "Oh, mm -hmm. I was there. I was there." <laughs> but then you, you don't want to give me certificate. I was there. I was there. So we use this as a means yeah, of. Yeah, uh, my, uh, my, my questions. Can you? Let me finish. Sorry, let me finish quickly. And then we we'll okay. ask questions. Thank you. So that we can allow people to. I'm move. not seeing my theory. You know. So we don't want to see people, people waiting. So. Hey? Uh, just stay there. Just open your camera and uh, just stay. Doesn't matter. All right. So we got a few more. You're not seeing yourself. I'm seeing you. So no problem. <laughs> All right. So who can see me? <laughs> we can see you. We only verify, you. you know. <laughs> yeah, no, you can see me. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, don't go, don't go. Just stay, please. Okay, tomorrow. Please.
Talif, uh, please, if my experience, my... please don't go. Let's finish this quickly. I will let you know. Put your maybe... WeChat ID, please. On the... I, have I have just sent you a request on WeChat. But then I, I, will, I will know if it's going with me. Uh, when you yeah, with everyone, he will let us know. I will let you know. Don't worry. I got two more. I got two more slides to take. Uh, so just, just a minute. I will, I will let you know in less than. Yeah. So in case you, you think you are taking a day, and Olana say you done, then you can also check the YouTube or check the files. You can please share uh, the group. send the. So the you also silent mistakes and come anytime. Also, please. Because for some of us, we just following on WeChat. I will do that. Yeah, we're not following on YouTube. Or... All right. So I've taken the last WhatsApp, WhatsApp. In the WhatsApp. All right. If you did, yeah. Because I wanted to ask. Okay, that's it. I'm going to ask you to my property keys, though. 